St John's in Newfoundland and Labrador, a beautiful port on the east coast of Canada built on one of the best natural harbours in the world. It's just a four and a half hour flight away from the UK and its closeness to the old world is why it's one of the oldest surviving European settlements in North America. But that's not the only reason it's famous. This is Signal Hill overlooking the city. In 1901, Marconi received the first ever transatlantic wireless message here and it's perhaps the best place to start your visit. The message sent to Marconi was a simple one, the letter S in Morse code form, but it led to him becoming a hero. He was fated like a king. He was sent to Montreal in a car where he was met by capitalists keen to hear about this new era in wireless communications. An era which I suppose has eventually led onto the internet, something you're probably watching this on today. So did Marconi celebrate this groundbreaking achievement by getting on the beers? Who knows, but if he had, he'd have gone down to Jewel Street. This place is legendary. People come here from far and wide. And the reason why is because it's got more bars and nightclubs per square foot than any other street in North America. And it really gets going after dark. And that's what I'm gonna do now. Well, I've had a great time. George Street has really lived up to its reputation. There's been great music. The good times have really flowed, but sometimes you've got to know when to quit. And that's not now. From a place where you lose track of time to a place that takes you back in time, Kitty Vidi Village. It's still got the look of a traditional fishing village and some of the inhabitants were working the waters here long before we arrived. For generations, the talk around the dinner tables here would probably have been dominated by the theme of cod. These days though, it's got a little bit more of an artistic flavour. This is the Kitty Vidi Village Plantation. Well, we have our 10 artist studios. There are craftspeople working in textiles and ceramics. We have a jeweler, we have uh, somebody who's making prints. And these are all artists who have their craft uh, skills well in hand. Uh, this acts as an incubator to offer them some support and training in business skills so that they will become uh, successful entrepreneurs when they have grow the space. Well, I'm here with Laura Higginall, a ceramic artist, and she's gonna show me how to throw a mug. And who knows, I might even have a go myself. Laura, go for it, what are we doing? So once your piece of clay is centered on the wheel, you need to open the piece of clay. The next step is to start pulling up the walls. Now that is where I suspect it may all go wrong for me. <laughs> So we have swapped seats, we have even swapped clothes, within reason. What happens now? I think this is going very well indeed. <laughs> My skills obviously lie elsewhere. Finally then, a trip to Cape Spear, about as close as you can get to home without getting on a plane. That's because it's the most easterly point in the whole of North America. If you were to start swimming that direction, the first bit of land you'd hit would be Ireland, which is about 2,000 miles away, unless you go a bit wonky, in which case you might end up in Iceland or the Azores. The point is, if you are going to do that, make sure you wear your armbands. Better still, don't do it at all. Drop anchor in Newfoundland and Labrador and stay in St John's as long as you can. <laughs> 